Hi, and thanks for joining me today. This is Jen Lee with Gentastic Journey, and today we have a card tutorial that's to show you how to take a very specific stamp or die set and make it into a gorgeous card, no matter how difficult the set appears to be. So let's get started. This is a medical die set, and I was trying to determine how to create a gorgeous card with such varied dies without it looking boring or kid-like. This is a card for my beautiful daughter, Amanda. She made me a mom and has blessed me ever since in countless ways. So this card is to acknowledge her incredible career as a nurse, but also I wanted it to be gorgeous for her. Let's show how we can take kind of varied difficult dies or stamps and make them into gorgeous cards. So I have a happy birthday sentiment and I wanted it to sparkle and this gold paper, oh my gosh, does it sparkle, right? But then I found this gold pattern paper that had just little gold flecks in it and I thought that might be pretty. So I'm taking some removable tape and we're going to cut out all this stuff. I also found some mirror gold cardstock as well. I had a few just remnants. I cut some of the pieces out of that and you'll see later on I end up cutting even more pieces out just to give it a little bit more something because some of these pieces are fairly bland on their own. <laughs> just like making mail cards, this can be difficult when we have an idea in mind or a set in mind and then we're like, goodness, how do we just put these all over a card? How is this going to work? So I think when you add a little bit of pattern paper, you add a little bit of dimension, it's going to all work out just fine. So here's where I end up putting some more gold. There's some inserts for some of these dies. I'm trying to make it really pop. So again, this shimmery paper is just to die for, and I think she'll really appreciate it. So I'm going to put that as a background piece on my card. And then here I'm just trying to determine which happy birthday set that I die cut out do I want. And I think it's going to be this happy, the big happy with the scripted birthday. But I think I might want to put it on the happy. So I'll have to cut it out of some different paper just so it pops out right, really nicely. And here I'm just going to set up some of these dies. These die sets can be difficult when we get an idea in our head for someone. But I think this might be my most favorite card I think I've ever made. It is just gorgeous and it's nice and substantial and I have to tell you this is not a normal card size. I just used a six by six paper. I did cut it down just a tad. It's something I'm going to hand to her. So I'm going to hand make the envelope and you'll see that at the end. So here I am going to cut out a lot of the different pieces in double-sided foam sheets and I've used foam before, foam sheets before, but I never really thought about getting them double-sided, which why not, right? We use double-sided foam for when we put stuff down so why not a whole sheet right that's what I'm using here and it's actually the first time I've ever used it I always just usually glue the regular foam sheets on there so I'm pulling off this foam tape and it was nice because it kind of left that bottom piece there and then I'm just using it to keep the sentiment straight so I'm putting these foam happy letters down and I'm using the bottom of the foam tape and you could use a ruler you could use a lot of different things I'm not a very precise card crafter so this is just me being a little bit more precise than my norm just because I didn't want them to be too wavy looking because it's such a prominent piece of the card. Now the only difficult piece of these double-sided foam sheets is that if you don't put the pieces really precisely on them you can see the foam behind it and I'm going to show you a remedy I had for that but you know just be real precise and don't push it down until you're really sure. So here goes the mask. The mask was my most difficult piece and I sped this up significantly and cut some pieces out but it had so many little itty bitty pieces in it and I cut out some gold and I cut out some of the purple paper and I just let, left those dies in there so I could see where everything needed to be so I didn't set them down in the wrong place, right? These foam sheets are pretty sticky so once you get them down you're really not going to be able to pull them up. And then I forgot about the little gold piece but we'll figure out where to put it. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, uh-oh, but I think it'll go towards the bottom and it'll be fine. So then I'm going to put the purple and gold pieces and I'm just double pushing all that foam down because you don't want the foam to come up when you pull off the backing pieces. And then I'm just going to push everything, all the pieces on. And I just really love this glitter paper. I'm so glad I chose it because it is gorgeous in person. So we'll put down the happy with all these glitter and I used all the same cardstock for the happy. And then I'm using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue and I'm going to stick down the birthday. I'm just going to get it on enough of the pieces where it will stick down no problem. I've got the little end of that Y that has a little bit of glue at the end of it, so that will look fine. I could have put a shadow on that piece I thought about later on, but I wouldn't have wanted to put a gold shadow and a white shadow may have been too stark on there, so I just left it alone, but just something else to think about. At the end of the day, you know, just popping some of this up with 
foam sheets and putting a little bit of glue and changing some of the inserts so they're different colors makes it all really cool. But the pattern paper is really the part and you could use, you know, a background that you made yourself. Any type of background that's really going to pop and be beautiful or whatever the look you're going for, fun or masculine, whatever you're looking for. I think that's the magic in these kinds of cards because I literally look like this set. I just can't envision putting down a bunch of these pieces and it looking pretty or dramatic or stunning or any of the words that I was looking for for my daughter. And then it ended up just gorgeous. And so you just kind of have to think, what if these were flowers? What would I do with them? Or take them out of their little element and say, you know, what could I do with these? And I really enjoyed this. Again, this little mask was almost the end of me, but... <laughs> Once I got all the little pieces in and made sure I didn't have any sticky pieces left, and you'll see in a minute here, I kind of fix where I can see some of the foam behind the images. And then I did end up losing a few pieces, even though I used my press and seal, which is my go-to when I have a bunch of intricate little dies. I save them all on my press and seal, but I think because I cut so many pieces out in so many different papers that I just lost a few things. So then I ended up cutting pieces out and making them all work, and it worked out just fine. I love the stethoscope. You can't see it as well, even though I put purple on black. It's still gorgeous and she'll be able to tell. So I use some scraps. So that's where you're seeing like some of the things I put down there in two pieces. It's because I used two little pieces of scrap. I love to use my scrap and especially this pretty gold paper. You can always cut things in pieces and make it all work. Nobody can tell. And I give this stuff out to my family and my friends. So no need for me to be overly concerned. And I don't think anybody's looking at the intricate details to say, oh my gosh, I think there might be a, a separation between those two. <laughs> and then this bottle was cute. I almost left the white cross by itself because I thought it was really cool, but I put the glossy gold piece in there. And this is a heart. I didn't put this up on foam because it was so intricate and I think it's good to have different levels of dimension on your card. Okay then here's again we forgot about this gold piece and I just think it makes the card and I wish I would have put it at that angle but I was afraid it was going to cover the stethoscope but I think that actually looked the best but I ended up putting it at the bottom of the card and letting it hang over a little bit because I'm going to have that shimmery gold base. So we're going to adhere that down with a little bit of Barely Art Precision Craft glue. That looks really pretty. I just liked that piece and I didn't want to leave it out. Then we'll adhere it to this shimmer paper which is my favorite part of this card and I could have cut a hole out of the center of that shimmer paper I just I didn't <laughs> That helps you save some of the paper and you just put a little bit around the edges. That's a good way to save some of those papers where you don't have a lot of them. But I just adhered it directly to that shimmer paper and I did pop it up onto some foam tape just because, again, I'm hand delivering this so it probably would have cost me two bucks to mail this in the mail with all this foam and dimension. I'm going to hand deliver this to her today. If you're watching today, November 6th is her birthday so it can be as big and foamy as we want it to be. So here's my little trick. So I used some permanent markers that are gold and I had two different shades of it but this is the shade that matched and I'm just going to go around and cover that white foam because I don't have any white in the card it looked really stark I did that for a whole bunch of it so I did it to the stethoscope and I did it to parts of that needle and I think it just makes it so I am now going to cut out a little pink sheet because I want something to be able to write on and then I found another sheet of the gold I'm going to put that in the inside again I'm just trying to make this card just really stand out. She is one of my most favorite people in the whole world. I need to make a card that I think she'll really love. She's a big supporter of all the things I do in life. Definitely need to take an opportunity to show her how important she is to me. Okay, and then <laughs> I'm doing my usual. I'm just going to trim this off with scissors. You could certainly have used your guillotine trimmer or your just regular trimmer. I just trimmed it off with my scissors because I could follow along and now they're both the same. And I did that because the top was so heavy and the bottom sheet was not heavy enough with all that foam. So just adding a couple extra sheets of cardstock is really going to make that base piece nice and heavy. And then here, my very precise <laughs> measuring, I just make a couple marks and where I think I want that paper to sit on that gold sheet. And then I use my Fisker's trimmer to trim them off. And I do put all my supplies in the description box below with links. So if you want to purchase anything, you can certainly do that. And then here I'm just putting some double-sided tape on the back. This is the inside of the card, so I definitely don't want any dimension. And then we'll hear this down. And this paper pad is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Okay, and here's where I have that pink sheet. And I just used a decorative die to cut it out. It would have been nice if I had a square die, but I didn't. But it worked out okay because it's such a big card. And that will just give me a little bit 
bit of space to write, but yet you can still see the background really nicely and the pink matched some of those flowers. It's pretty decorative. And then because I had some extras, I put some of the remnants of the paper that I used on the top and then I'll use some of the extra pieces and just decorate that inside top piece as well. I forgot to use a couple of these pieces. There's with these little splatters, which I'm not sure if those were supposed to be blood splatters or what they were, but I made them decorative and put them on the inside. I had an extra bottle because I had cut a lot of gold with the bottle and I never used the thermometer either. So here's the final product and then I'm going to make a quick envelope. So stay tuned with me as we make an envelope. If you haven't made an envelope before, they're super easy. I will include the link to my video where I do a full tutorial. They're super easy and I've been doing these so long that I really don't even measure all that much. <laughs> so I just kind of use the card and then I make a quick envelope and again watch the full tutorial so you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing and how you actually do measure it and then it's kind of an odd shaped envelope because it's such a big card it's still it's a pretty envelope and it's got a lot of the colors that were in the card and we'll put a little bit of double-sided tape for the top of the envelope there we go then I said you know what since I'm hand delivering this why not put a wood piece on the front and then I had this extra heart it was the insert to one of the items I used and there we go so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you inspiration for those difficult die and stamp sets. We can make them gorgeous too. Thanks for joining me today. If you would, please hit the like button if you enjoyed this content. That makes me feel so good. And then also subscribe to my small channel. I love to have you come alongside me with this fantastic journey. I will see you in the next video.